So it's been a long time since I've done any whittles. And this is for those of you who are absolute utter beginners, right? This is a very beginner oriented project because um, not everyone out there is wanting to do something complicated like a face or a, um, you know anything with lots of facets or detail or proportions. Um, but it's also a fun project if you're just kind of sitting around and you want to make something for a family member, a kid, or uh, somebody that you know. It's a little um, pilgrim's hat, all right? It's nothing complicated, super ultra straightforward, and, uh, you know, nothing fancy about this. It's not fancily carved at all, and uh, it's fun. I enjoyed making it, and uh, it's very satisfying, these simpler projects, because you can embrace the, the zen of carving. <sighs> Just enjoy the knife going through the fibers of the wood, the crystalline structure of the wood. Uh, it's just a, a good time. So hopefully you can try this out. Uh, this would look really good painted. In fact, I think it's a prime candidate for painting because it is so simple, a nice canvas for it. But anyway, a pilgrim's hat for this Thanksgiving. If you're not American, then uh, this probably means less to you. But if you are, enjoy, all right? And uh, it's a knife-only-ish tutorial. I use a, a gouge a couple of times, but uh, not a whole lot. Aside from that, this video is sponsored by Fundamentals of Wood Carving. Uh, it's an online uh, learning place that you can uh, gather skills about the basics of wood carving and then graduate uh, into intermediate and advanced projects, uh, all surrounding mostly the, the realistic human face. So if that appeals to you, you're trying to build your chops in that regard, the online school is a great resource and I'll link that below. Uh, now that we got that over with, let's get into it. All right, so to start, uh, we've got a piece of a half inch by a four inch by two and a half inch a piece of, uh, in this case, butternut, but basswood would work just as well, maybe better. And uh, I'm just using a thin piece of wood, although you really could go even a little thinner than this. Um, I just wanted it to be rigid. And so uh, that's that. All right, first things first, let's talk about what the tools are and the material. So first thing, I've got a knife. This is just an inch and, uh, I believe it's an, an inch and a half. Um, Beaver, uh, Badger State blades rather. And I've got a V-tool, quarter inch. Don't need the bend, but I uh, just happened to pull out this tool and it's kind of a neat old tool. But yeah, anything uh, about a quarter of an inch, a V-tool, 60 degree would be absolutely fine. And of course, trusty um, ruler. And my basswood, or butternut actually in this case, is a piece of half inch wood, and it's four inches by two and a half inches. And you could go a little thinner than this. The only reason I went with this kind of thicker piece is just to make sure I had plenty of room to round the hat and create a little bit of a brim edge and all that. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so to start, um, you really could just go to a, uh, uh, bandsaw and cut out the major shapes. Um, I'm not doing that because a lot of folks don't have a bandsaw and maybe you've got a simple a jig or maybe you can get some half inch uh, stock basswood or uh, a butternut, I'm not sure. But if you do have a bandsaw, just cut it out, all right? In fact, I'm convincing myself right now as we talk, I'll just bandsaw it out. I have one. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use a scroll saw, all right? There we go. All right, now that we got that out of the way, one quick note, I did let the grain run along the length of the brim, and that's because it's thin, it's narrow, and it's a lot more likely to be um, breaking off, especially if the grain is running this way. So make sure those little dark lines are running the length of the brim if you're gonna do this pilgrim hat. All right, so moving on, let's take the corners off, right? Because that's kind of procedure number one when you're doing a whittle like this that you've bandsawed yourself. Cut the hard edges off, all right? And this is a little bit of a chippier piece of wood and the basswood would be just as well, but I happen to have some butternut around and I thought, well, I'll make good use of it, might as well. All 
Oh, and real quick, if you don't have a uh, sharpening system at home, just a piece of uh, shoe leather or just a piece of old uh, belt leather even would work really well as a honing uh, setup here. Let me pull mine out. It's in a drawer right next to me. Bear with me. Um, this is one that Beavercraft sells. I don't even know if they sell it. They, you can get it in their multi-knife kit, but it's just a piece of leather. Uh, you don't need to buy anything special, but let's tilt the camera over. And uh, you can just run it across the edge of your table. Make sure it's nice and polished. My tool could use a little bit of polishing, so that's why I take this opportunity to show you this. All right. That should be better and try to keep the blade flat against the leather with the stropping compound as you're gently dragging it across that's the idea all right so let's see if that's any better yeah a little bit better oh big chips it's kind of a brittle piece of uh wood Oh, which is making me wish I chose, it's making me wish I chose the, the basswood, but that's okay. You get what you get sometimes, right guys? All right, so I'm just taking the uh, edges down, kind of rounding the brim of the hat, even though straight on, you wouldn't really see this. It's kind of a downward tilt view to see that little turn of the brim. So I'm just gonna take the edges of that down, like so, and bring that to kind of a point, if you will. Even if you won't. I will. All right, just like that. Nice. Yes. Just like that. Okay. And uh, next thing I want to do, I could do this with a V tool, but uh, in this case, I'll use my knife just to outline the buckle. And you can see I've kind of done a crappy little drawing here. And then along the base of the buckle and you can even extend that line over to the edge of the hat just like that so you could also use the v tool and i'll show you what that looks like as well so i can just kind of outline it on this side following across that line this is kind of the transition of the belt and the buckle to the brim of the hat so we can separate that out with the v tool and uh and this is one brittle piece of uh, butternut I don't know if I would have chosen it had I known that, but uh, we're gonna practice our ability to uh, stick with it. And yeah, cause you, you guys will run into some crappy woods, right? And you can't, uh, you can't just always win with wood. All right, so I'm outlining that. I'm gonna have to switch V-tools, guys. I think this one's a little bit uh, dull. Give me a second. Okay, funny story. Um, all of my V tools, or most of them, are at a friend's house because I'm working on a, a big project there at his place. Anyway, all I've got here is a uh, Vayner. This is a uh, probably I'm gonna say a sixteenth inch or uh, or so Vayner, which is really just a U shaped tool, like a deep U. If you were to look at it straight on, which I can't show you because well, I guess I can. Let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, see that? There's the shape. Okay, so same difference as a V tool. So I'm just gonna outline, let's see if I can zoom in here. Just gonna outline the top of the buckle. Of course the focus is gonna wanna go to my hand, so forgive that, just like so. Okay, that's the idea. And I'm just outlining my drawing is all, nothing, nothing fancy. Yeah, you can enjoy the sound of a, a piece of brittle wood, even though it's uh, not quite as buttery and smooth as some other materials, but that's okay. Okay, so this is where it's important. Uh, if you're not wearing a glove, um, you should wear a glove. Get a glove, guys. Uh, but a, a safety practice, even if you have a glove, it's not going to protect you from a stab. So uh, you're gonna when you're doing this sort of a cut, what looks wrong with this? Well, if I slip, boom, I go into my finger. So I wanna keep my finger out of the path of the gouge and so that if I slip, well, it doesn't, doesn't track into my hand, right? So anyway, I'm extending the belt over just like so. 
And we'll come back here with the knife. See, again, it's just a habit for me to, to do that. We'll come back with the knife and clean up the hat brim. And you are carving cross grain here, so that does make it a little bit more challenging as you put the knife through the wood, like so. Just taking those edges off. And you know, I could have waited to uh, define that belt. In fact, uh, yeah, I probably should have, but it's okay. In other words, I could have rounded the hat a little bit, but there'll be a little bit of chasing the, the line that we made. Not a big deal. Happens all the time. Okay, so I'm going around with the uh, knife to that line of the belt and the buckle. All right, just like so. Okay, how about that? Isn't that awesome? So you have to have some pretty decent hand strength for this. So don't get hard on yourself if you feel like you're having a hard time pulling the blade through the material. It's either one of two things. You need to practice with some softer woods like basswood or even some types of pine. Or uh, it could also be that your tool is dull. So Instead of spending all that extra time trying to take that dull knife and push it through the fibers of the wood, try and sharpen your knife. Grab a piece of leather, shoe leather, a piece of, uh, you know, belt. If you have an old belt, you can take it and uh, brush the blade up against with a little bit of jeweler's compound. You can get that online. I'll link it below in the description as well. Anyway, so I'm just rounding the edges of the hat just like that. All right, and I'll come over here. Oh, look at that big chunk that came off. We'll pretend that didn't happen, huh? We'll pretend that didn't happen. Oh, down goes my strop. And come over here. Looks like I forgot to clean up some of the edges here, some corners. edges down and uh, just taking a look at it I make a stop cut at the base of the belt just like so so I'm going straight in you can see that and straight down again I want to make sure that my finger notice is not down there so if this were to break uh, it wouldn't cut <laughs> into my hand that's important these are habits that you develop over time that um, can save you a trip to the ER. And let me tell you, that's no fun. I've, I've done that. I've taken those trips to the ER and it's, uh, you know, it sounds like more fun than it really is. So, and it doesn't sound like fun. So, yeah, don't do it. All right, so I'm just coming across. You can see I'm just bringing that hat brim down, just thinning it out a little. I don't, I don't want it to be thick. I want it to have a tiny bit of a turn upwards, but not much. All right, and I'm just removing these saw arcs and also the uh, lines that I made from drawing. Okay, so I'm doing a little bit of a V-cut. That means I'm coming in at about a 45 degree angle with the blade, right underneath that belt. And uh, I can come the other direction, 45 the other way, and separate that out like so. It creates that nice little separation, that groove. And... Uh, Cool. Yeah, it's coming along here. This is a great uh, way to kind of practice your use of the V-tools and veiners. Um, you know, the V-tool, by the way, I mentioned that earlier and I didn't end up using it, but it works very much the same way as the veiner does. You're going to hold it down 
and you're going to push. Ideally, you can get some control with the left hand or your non-dominant hand supporting that knife holding hand or that gouge holding hand. And that's gonna give you the tension that you need. So notice I'm always using both hands to interact with one another. Actually, for the most part I am. Sometimes I don't, but uh, that's what's giving me control is that resistance between the left and the right hand. All right, so I'm coming in, defining again, notice that habit. If I come through, it's gonna come away. It's not gonna cut in my hand. Excuse my hand shake here as I push the blade through. So I'm just cleaning up that inside corner where the brim meets the hat. And you know what would be really fun is if you painted this. You could absolutely get some black paint and some gold paint or yellow paint and paint the buckle gold. And then paint, paint the belt brown if you wanted to or also could do it black. I think, I feel like a lot of times the pilgrims would have a black belt on there. But um, these are options. And we're going to keep this uber simple, right? Because those of you who haven't carved before, you know, you, you don't need to have a whole lot of detail to kind of get just a basic feel for the tools and the, and the techniques. And that's what we're after here. You know, there's so many other great projects that you can graduate from and try out. This is just a way for you to get basic knife skills, to learn the kind of way that the knife behaves in the grain. Um, and again, if you don't have any fancy tools, like a bandsaw, you can use a little hand saw or a scroll saw to cut out the material. Or you could just take your time and uh, carve it out with your knife. That's another option. But uh, for the sake of time, not wanting to bore you guys, I'm going to use the, uh, you know, I used the saw, I already did, but uh, that's that. So I'm gonna take a little bit out of that belt, a little bit out of that belt, just so the belt buckle stands proud. So I'll show you what that looks like again. Slow motion. <laughs> okay. I get it. I'm not I'm not funny. Um just coming along here. Just like that, huh? You see that? That's how you do it, huh? down a little bit more, rounding it out. Now, uh, my uh, Canadian friends aren't gonna really appreciate the Pilgrim's hat, probably. Uh, maybe they will, but I, I can't imagine that they would understand uh, the tradition of American Thanksgiving. Uh, but uh, it's one of the finest of holidays, and well, principally because of the turkey and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes and all those amazing things, but also we have football. And um, you know, our home team here, in the uh, Michigan area is the Lions, so we always get to see the Lions uh, loot, loot, I mean play, and uh, that's a great time. So, you know, actually we've got a pretty decent team, I think, now, don't we? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't watched football in years. I don't know. But I will watch it. Uh, I guess I'll watch it once in a while. So it hasn't really been years, a year. I'll watch it on Thanksgiving, okay? I, uh, I watch it enough to kind of basically know the rules for the most part, except I still have to have whoever's with me remind me of what's going on. I digress. Now I'm going to uh, take a little bit more out of the hat. And if you notice, notice how I'm cutting in this way. The grain is chipping. See all that? that that's a good sign to go the opposite way. So I was going this way. I'm turning the blade and I'm going to go the opposite way. And you know, without going at into length about the details of why that is, um, it's a really good kind of basic skill to have to just move the move a different direction uh, if if the wood is not behaving. You don't have to understand anything about wood grain or the tubes that make up the, the fiber bundles and any of that stuff. Just to know um, if it's not working, try moving in a different direction. All right, so. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. So it doesn't like to be worked that way, so I will go this way. And I'm just cleaning off the sharpening marks. Notice there's a slight angle, so here's the angle that I'm going at here, right? So here's the piece of wood, and here's the, well, it's about a 45, maybe a little bit less than that. A little bit less than that, actually, yeah. 
Okay, so I'm just coming in. To that belt. Now again, I've got a nice clean surface because I cleaned off those cuts and uh, or those markings rather. And we're in pretty good shape, guys. Pretty close. Now I'm just going to use uh, a knife to just take off the that gross um, mark that that Sharpie made. And, you know, good enough reason to start using a uh, pencil instead of a Sharpie. It just doesn't show up as well on camera. Or a wax crayon will also do a good job and not penetrate the wood fiber so much and make it so difficult to take off. All right, I'm going to come back over and just take a little bit off of the top of the hat. This guy, he's making noise. Just like that. Okay. And now you could uh, oil this wood. You could add some clear coat lacquer. You might want to seal it, though. If you are planning on uh, painting it, you would want to seal it first. That way the colors don't bleed into one another. So you could spray it with a clear poly gloss. That's a lot of times what I'll do with these whittles is I'll just get a, uh, a clear gloss. Oh, I'm sorry, not a gloss, a, a, a matte poly spray. And I'll just spray it or I'll paint it. So I'm just paring that hat brim down. Okay, how simple, how easy is that? And put some little facets in it. You know, if you have a sharp knife, you can get away with making all these little cuts. And it creates a beautiful character, especially if you paint it. All that will come through in the paint. And uh, especially if you brush off any excess paint that you have, it will create this awesome kind of aged look to it. It will look handmade, which is ultimately what you want, right? You want it to look hand done because, you know, if you turn this into a little... Uh, ornament or a little uh, gift to one of your nephews or family members um, you know you want them to enjoy it so um, I completely lost my train of thought what was I talking about oh <laughs> uh, well, yeah you want them to know that it's handmade not enjoy it what am I saying I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm a little bit under the weather and I'm a little bit foggy headed, but I'm um, enjoying this. This is when you're sick, carving is an awesome activity because it uh, it's relaxing, it doesn't take a lot of energy and you're still being creative. You don't feel you know, like you're like being a lazy bum and just sitting around watching TV, eating popcorn or whatever. I guess people don't eat popcorn when they're sick. All right. Clean that up. Clean out my cuts. All right, guys, there's my pilgrim's cap. Oh, by the way, clear that bottom. Don't forget that. Get those saw marks off. If you use the bandsaw, you're going to have lines from that. Whew. 
And you can also cut the lines off of the back if you want. Find the right direction that it wants to behave in. There it is. It wants to go this way. So I'll just go in that direction. All right, I won't bore you with that, and I can clean the back off camera. But the uh, the gist of it is uh, pretty much there. It's blocked in. And there you have it, a very basic pilgrim's hat. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, hope that you enjoy, that you get to paint it and make something kind of cute just like it. And uh, again, a great jumping off for a starting point if you're a beginner carver. This is ultra, ultra beginner project. Um, you can always uh, zhuzh it up if you want, make it fancier. Um, uh, in my case, we just kept it really, really simple. But uh, yeah, enjoy. I know a lot of you have been asking for whittle videos. And um, some of you beginners out there might want something that they, you know, you feel that isn't too challenging. Oh, here's another thing really quickly. Take the edge off of that hat. Take the corners off. Round that edge. It's going to make it look a lot better. Just like that. See that? Same thing over here. How could I forget? I'm going to take the inside edge off of this. There you have it, guys. Kind of fun little pilgrim's hat, right? Nothing fancy. Get those facets in there, all those little facets. You can see like grooves and lines in there. All right, there you go. See you guys. All right, thanks again for watching, guys. And uh, be sure again to check out the online school. Projects like this are running uh, in the school now. There's uh, over 80 projects now on, on there, all the way from uh, very beginner whittles like this one to advanced uh, carvings of realistic faces and uh, stuff that I uh, make a living uh, carving and selling. So that being said, check that out if you wanna learn more. And uh, that's that. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Um, I'm enjoying these little projects again. And I know a lot of you have requested them. And uh, if it helps you kind of get into the basics of carving, then uh, power to you. Anyway, kind of a cute little project. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.